Our gospel is a healing miracle. It is a story of healing. A paralytic or a paralyzed man, someone who cannot move, someone who cannot walk, is brought to Jesus, carried on a bed by some friends. The gospel is a wonderful picture of a man who was saved because of the faith of his friends. Had it not been for the friends, the paralytic would never have reached the healing presence of Jesus at all. The paralytic was certainly saved by the faith of his friends. My dear brothers and sisters, the approach of Jesus to the paralytic might seem astonishing. He begins by telling the paralytic that his sins are forgiven. There was a double reason for that because in Palestine, it was a universal, it was a common belief that all sickness, all kinds of illness was the result of sin and that there is no sickness that could be cured until the sin was forgiven. That is why for this reason, there is no doubt at all that the paralytic could never have been cured until he was convinced that his sins had been forgiven. It is most probable that the paralytic had indeed been a sinner and that he was convinced that his illness was the result of his sin as it may very well have been and without the assurance of forgiveness healing could never have come to him my, my dear friends the paralytic in the gospel knew that he was a sinner because he was a sinner he was certain that God was his enemy and because he felt that God was his enemy he was paralyzed he was ill, and once Jesus brings to the paralytic the forgiveness of God, he knows that God was no longer his enemy, but God is his friend. That is why the paralytic is finally cured. But in today's gospel, Jesus dared to forgive sins. As we know, to forgive sins is the prerogative of God. That is why the scribes, the lawyers, and the people, they thought that Jesus had insulted God because He was forgiving sins. And he was tell they were telling Him, You are blaspheming. You are using the name of God. He joined issue with them on their own ground. And the Lord said, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven or Get up and walk, telling it to the paralytic. Blasphemy, they chorus. The scribes accused Jesus of claiming to do something which only God can do. My dear friends, the enemies of the Lord accused Jesus of insulting God because he arrogated to himself the very powers of God. Now let us remember that these scribes believed that no one could get up and walk unless his sins were forgiven. If Jesus was able to make the paralytic get up and walk, then that was an answerable proof that the paralytic sins were forgiven and that the claim of Jesus is true. And so Jesus demonstrated that he was able to bring forgiveness to a man's soul and he was able to heal the paralysis of a man's body. Jesus brings forgiveness to a man's soul and health to a man's body. And it remains eternally true that we can never be right physically until we are right spiritually and that health in body and peace with God go hand in hand. 
As I was reflecting about the gospel reading for today, what entered my mind this morning was a very common, a very common Latin phrase, which I believe many of you know. Men sana in corpore sano. Men sana in corpore sano. The physical well-being is as important as the spiritual and psychological well-being. Literally, men sana in corpore sano means a sound mind in a sound body. Or, applying it to the gospel, a sound soul in a sound body. Healthy in mind and healthy in body. Healthy in spirit and healthy in body. How do we achieve healthy mind and healthy body and spirit? I have some tips to attain a healthy mind in a healthy body. Number one, get enough sleep. Get enough sleep. Adequate sleep is extremely important. Who would think something simple like a good night's sleep can help your mind? We have to rest our body. Get enough sleep. Number two, exercise can make you happy. Let's get moving. Somebody said, Galaw-galaw nang hindi agad pumanaw. Galaw-galaw nang hindi agad pumanaw. Number three, minimize stress. Avoid stress if you can. Living a stressful life will not solve any problems and will not address all your concerns. Number four, what you eat makes a difference. Eat healthy. Number five, quit smoking and drinking forever. Number six, maintain contact with the outside world, with your friends. And finally, number seven, befriend God and pray more. Men sana in corpore sano, healthy in mind and healthy in body, healthy in soul and also healthy physically. Amen.